Hi everyone, I can't see the chat, but I'm assuming D will be looking over at it. Uh, I am, yes. Alright. Do you have any way to bring up that image I sent you earlier? I think uh, I'd... Oh, I do indeed, give me one second. I will, uh, I'll actually put it in TTS real quick. Gotcha, while well, you're doing that. Yeah, so, so my section is on defensive set play. And, uh, despite all the flaming Jay did earlier, <laughs> defensive set play is one of the most powerful and one of the hardest things to do in the game, if you do it properly. Um, but it's absolutely devastating, because oftentimes your opponent just doesn't really have a way to get out. Um, or has to spend so many resources to get out that you can often still end at an advantage. If we take a look at this, is this showing in the right spot on your screen? It is now. Gotcha. So so this is kind of what I call a snowball loop for Exceed. Uh, this is the thing I come up with. And for defensive set play, we're specifically going to talk about this from a defensive uh, mindset. Basically, the general idea of this is that if I take the first turn and I do something that gives me a favorable position on my opponent's turn, the best they can really do is neutralize that. Because this is a turn-based game. They can only do one thing. And if all they can do is neutralize it, I have the first turn again, and I can get my, put myself in another favorable position. Um, so, so walking through here, I do something that puts me in a favorable position, something that gives me an advantage. If they don't have a way to counter it, I can create a situation where I'll, I will still be advantaged after the next strike, and I can strike into them. And then I have the first turn again, because they'll need to do something to fix their position after my strike. If they strike into me, I'm in a favorable position, I'm more likely to win. And if I win the strike, not only did you waste your turn striking into me, but also, it's my turn again. And I can do something that puts me in a favorable position. So it's this really kind of mean loop, and you can break out of it. Um, putting opponents into this loop and finding ways to break out of this loop yourself is one of the biggest challenges in Exceed. Um, common ways to break out of this loop, as I assume some people would be asking. Ryu has a boost called Way of the Warrior. Plus 2 power, plus 2 speed. Really solid for breaking out of this boost because, for example, if I play Light and he plays Way of the Warrior, now not only has he counteracted my speed advantage, but he also has power in play to put pressure on me. If but you're... not every character has something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're someone like Sagat, you can mitigate your disadvantage by striking face up to get one point of speed. So you can cut that speed advantage in half. Things like that. But uh, in many cases, you're going to be forced to trying to play neutral. Which usually means manipulating your position. Yep. The other common way, uh, kind of the Discord meta approach to breaking out of this loop is... You, ha you have... A good position. You're going to win the next strike. What if I just wild swing into you? And I, I don't follow along this mindset as much, but basically what that's striving to do is attack the um, the defensive set plays uh, player's hand and try and minimize that down and hopefully create an advantage later in the game that they can take you so. Uh, but this is the basics of defensive set play. I do something that puts me in a good position, and you now need to respond to it. What are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. I would like to make a note, uh, because I am still learning fighting game terms. I got a message earlier from a fighting game player friend of mine. Set play is uh, something like looping pressure. It's a little hard to describe yeah. in XE terms, but uh, it tends to happen when the person with set play has a huge advantage, like knockdown. It's not really a neutral term. Aggressive set play was talking more about the applications of what we call set play and exceed in neutral, but this does describe setting up a situation where you are advantaged and your opponent has to find a way to break out of it. Defensive set play is probably the closest thing to what set play means in fighting games that exist in exceed. Alright, cool. 
So I think we were going to uh, do the thing where we play some games and talk through what's happening on a strategic level. Is that so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I remember right, I was going to pull out Shovel Knight and show off uh, some of the nonsense this character provides. Oh, uh, I apologize. I forgot to post the notification that we were starting. That was on me. Oh, good. And D, Tarankin, is going to take probably one of the most aggressive characters in the game. Mm -hmm. Zangief, King of Range 1. Yep. Alright. Uh, you should probably switch color. Yep. I was seating my seat to Mad while he finished. So we didn't use references as heavily in the earlier demonstrations today. Uh, we are absolutely going to be using references in this game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a big part of defensive set play is making sure that you can beat what your opponent throws out on the next turn. And if you don't use a reference, it's a little bit difficult to make sure that you beat everything they can throw out. Mm -hmm. So the huge advantage, uh, by the way, of me playing Zangief here is uh, I'm not actually good at Zangief. <laughs> so, I'm going to be running the default line, which is be aggressive, get in their face, strike at range 1. In other words, I'm using only the core strategy of Discord meta without anything of my own that I've used to develop Zangief. Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to see how this interacts uh, basically on a, on a playing field that's just raw Zangief, raw Discord meta. Do you want to go through Shovel Knight's cards first before we start? Uh... If you think it's important to talk about them, it's up to you. Sure, sure. Let's uh, let's go through them real quick. We're going to go right to left for a reason I'll mention at the end. Um, so, Alchemy Coin is a pretty good card. It's a projectile that draws you cards, depending on how far away your opponent is. Um, it also has this cool thing on the bottom that says plus three power. Uh, plus three is really big and exceed. The difference between plus two and plus three is huge. For example, a plus three assault beats sweeps card. Mm -hmm. So not only do you go first and take advantage and outspeed most of the options at range three, you also beat the defensive option they can throw out that traditionally counters you. Mm -hmm. uh, Chaos Sphere. This... Attack I'll probably be using a little bit more in this matchup. Um, but basically it lets you get extra range. And against Zangief, the puller push is really important. Um, if I want to initiate a strike, something I'm really looking to do is make sure that the turn after the strike, I'm not in a bad position. I want to be able to say, after I strike, you still need to deal with me. And then I can do something. Um, it also has this cool boost at the bottom that says plus three speed. And I probably don't need to talk too much about how absurd this is, but uh, speed six spike or speed seven dive is fairly ridiculous. <laughs> uh, we have Flare Wand. Flare Wand is a cool uh, grasp cross counter because you can use it at low range and then just retreat. Uh, it doesn't really do damage. You can spend force to do a little bit of damage, but I usually feel like that's a mistake. Um, it has this plus three armor boost, and that's almost exclusively what I use it for these days. Uh, plus three armor just increases your trading power an incredible amount. Your focus now has five armor. Your sweep has three armor, five, uh, yeah, three armor, six guard. Uh, your spike now can eat an EX sweep. And also hit it back. <laughs> and trade up. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, <laughs> we have mobile gear. I'll also be using this a lot in this matchup. This boost isn't that great, but I still use it for reasons we'll get into at the end. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yep. uh, but this before effect is going to be Shovel Knight's big thing. Um, before I talk about this card, I actually need to bring up Shovel Knight's uh, ability, 
which is this, if I take a move action, I get to draw a card. This sounds really good, it's actually garbage. <laughs> Shovel Knight does not want to draw cards. Actually, at all. He really doesn't like drawing cards. Well, if why, you're a good not? Shovel Knight player, and, and what I've said before, the only way you will lose the game is by deck out. Meaning running out of If time. you die to life, you I think you've been playing him wrong, is, is my opinion. Um, he's so tanky, he has options to gain life, as we'll see later. Uh, and his boosts are so ridiculous that even if they don't give you straight up armor, they can often act as pseudo damage mitigation, like I think what was talked about in the speed curve section. Uh, I think we alluded to it very briefly, but it's probably best to explain in detail. So, th so gotcha. this is also referred to as filtering. The idea is that you look at your worst case. And you play a thing that covers that specifically. So if you're like, if I'm looking at my if my opponent strikes at range two, and I'm like, all right, uh, I if they play assaults, I take four damage. But if I I can play like a focus or a sweep or whatever, or even a cross and beat that. If they play spike, and I don't beat spike, I take five damage and I do nothing. So. I'm going to play something that covers the spike in that case, because that's my worst case, right? Yep. That's the idea, and these boosts, when they enhance your attack's properties, like with speed in particular, they allow you to cover more things by filtering. So, plus three speed dive uh, at range two or greater, that's above curve. That's a speed seven card, which means if your opponent strikes with literally anything, unless they also have above curve options, you can play dive and you're not taking damage, period. And if you're at range three, you're yep. hitting them back. So it lets you filter tons of things. Or or even if you're playing something uh, something that's like now 6 speed, the only thing that can beat you with is Grasp. Mm -hmm. Right? Speed 7. And if they beat you with Grasp, you take 3 damage versus the 5, 6 you would have taken if they hit you with a slow attack. Right. So you play things that like you might lose to some things, but the things that you lose to, you don't care about losing to. Um, Shovel Knight's Exceed side may as well not exist, so I'm not really going to talk about it. Typically, I'm going to use Gage to pay these force costs on my boost to keep my pressure up. Makes sense. Uh, Warhorn. Oh, wait, why does this attack oh, relate to the importance of mobile gear then? Or sorry, not attack. Why does this ability? Oh, sorry. This attack moves you. Shovel Knight doesn't really want to move because he doesn't want to draw more cards. And the reason he doesn't want to draw more cards is he will deck out very easily. If you're not careful. So, being able to have movement options that don't just draw you extra cards is really important for him. Because he still needs some way to maneuver around the field. Ah, oh, okay. So that brings us to the next boost, I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, get digging. Plus one power, move three. Cannot overstate how good this boost is. Plus one power doesn't sound like a lot. But it's literally... A better version of run, and also you get a power. Because you can use it to go forwards or backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, this Warhorn, also an incredible attack. With basically any boost in Shovel Knight's kit, this attack becomes so absurd. Mm -hmm. uh, plus 3 power, goes to 8 power. Crush at speed 5. Speed. Yeah. Plus 3 armor, now out trade sweep. And also sets up range 3. Plus 3 speed. Now it's 8 speed and it beats grasp. It's absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll move on to the ultras. Shovel Knight's ultras are kind of like um, payout options. On the boosts instead of the attacks. This attack is probably one of the ones you'll see used more often. Um, because it's another movement tool. And that's really what it offers. It's also speed 6, so late game, especially if you can just hit someone with it and return it to hand, that can be enough damage to win the game. If you can say, hey, I can threaten, 4 damage, put it back in my hand, now I've got another 4 damage I can threaten, it's speed 6, it lets me move out of danger, and also hits at range 2 on curve. Um, that can be really strong. But this boost exists! <laughs> Uh, this is a common theme with Shovel Knight's kit. Is uh, Man, these cards are great, but look at this boost. Um, yeah, this boost lets you draw three cards and gain three life. And he doesn't really want to draw cards. This is one of the exceptions. 
Because the idea of gaining three life is just so, so good. Like, the difference between being at five life and eight life is huge. Mm -hmm. There are so many less things that kill you now. And especially in tandem with all your armor and that um, filtering that we mentioned earlier, filtering to take less damage, means that you are incredibly tanky and hard to kill. Then we have this ultra. Um, it has stun immunity. It draws you some cards. It also gains life. Um, the attack actually isn't bad. Is my hot take. A lot of people who play this character think this attack is really bad. Um, stun immunity makes anything viable in my book. Yeah. Uh, but this boost exists. So... We, we play the boost. And this says, hey, you can discard... Any one of your other boosts you put in play. And you just get plus 3 power, plus 3 speed, and plus 3 armor. Um, this boost basically says win the next strike. Mm -hmm. It's it's just that good. Um, as a note, if you have nothing in play, the continuous boost goes into play, and then the now effect triggers. Which means that this will be the only continuous boost you can target, and you'll have to discard it. Yeah, so don't play it unless you already have another continuous boost in play. Um, yeah. Because Shovel Knight has so many boosts, your opponent really needs their techs. Tech is the boost on dive that lets you discard a continuous boost from play. Yeah. If the opponent doesn't have techs, they're in a lot of trouble. And this is one of the characters that if your opponent jazz hands you turn one, you just kind of laugh at them like maniacally because you're just going to win that game. <laughs> and there's nothing they can do about it. All right. Well. All right. Let's. I'll do the standard pick tails. It's the meta. Did it? Ah. <laughs> meta failed me. I'll take first. All right. So he's going first. The oh, should I make my hand visible to you? Um. What do you think would would be more helpful? I'm perfectly fine playing without knowledge. I'll be okay. I don't. I don't want to risk seeing your hand. Okay. I'm, gonna uh, I'm going first. Standard Zangief thing. I'm most scared of turn one as he runs in. I need something to deal with that in some way, shape, or form. So I'm going to shape my mulligans around that idea. So these are the four cards I'm mulliganing. This parry would have been useful if I was going first. But because I'm not going first, and the, my worst case scenario, he can play without me being able to interact with it. That parry is not as useful for me. Kind of what I believe it was Andrew was saying with the ultras. This boost doesn't actually get me a lot until later in the game. And I can't afford this attack right now. So I'm not too worried about keeping it. Uh, it would have been mad, actually, but yeah. Oh, you're oh mad, e my mistake. You're dropping EX Assault. I'm dropping EX Assault. And the reason for this is I don't actually want to move closer to him. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna run away like a coward. All right, Serato asks, would you... Com so when you're using uh, Shovel Knight, would you completely discount your opponent using Dive when, when striking? No, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I was going to talk about it more if I had the first turn. Um, but I, I have a, a secret strategy to never lose to Jazz Hands on my first turn. And that strategy is to not attack on my first turn. If, if you don't strike on your first turn, your opponent cannot jazz hands you on your first turn. This is true. It's guaranteed, works every time. <laughs> um, uh, typically, what, what I'll do, like turn one, is I'll play plus speed. Because of Shovel Knight's speed four attack that lets me push pull, this creates a really, really dangerous mix up because now I can threaten to push Zangief here or I can threaten to dive in. If he moves to range 3, my dive is usually just unbeatable at speed 6. He can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. If he moves in all the way, I have a boost down and now I can do something else. Because even if, even if I just back up a square, now this boost is relevant again and super dangerous for him. 
Yep. So I'm just going to hold on to that boost in hand here. The other card I'm holding on is to his mobile gear, specifically with the idea of countering his uh, cross turn one. If he runs in, I will play speed. Now he needs to play fast because I'm threatening ways to get out. Mm -hmm. All right, but we're going to see what I draw first. My mulligan, uh, oh, I didn't realize. Apparently they're saying my voice is quieter. Uh, I'll just, I'll try to speak clearly. Hopefully, hopefully I'm still audible. Um, but yeah, uh, my mulligan was really straightforward. I looked at this boost and said I want this. Uh, I looked at this card and I said I want gauge. And I looked at these and I didn't see any crosses, so I mulliganed them. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't draw any crosses either. So I'm going to open with jump in. I will be discarding at end of turn. Hmm. I can drop one of these. Great, we mentioned this concept earlier. On my turn, the thing I'm looking to do is create a situation where he needs to respond because him just striking into me is going to lose. I'm going to play plus two speed. This is saying if I have dive, you lose this strike if you strike right now. You need to do something else. <laughs> plus one armor, or sorry, plus one power and stun immunity with an after effect that gets me gauge. Uh, this boost looks nice. But I'm not actually too worried about it. And the reason why is that it doesn't actually beat the thing I'm threatening. And when you, when you play boost, that's something you kind of need to be aware of, is not only am I making my attacks better, but am I beating the things that he can threaten right now? If I play dive right now, I would still win this strike. He still needs to do something else. So I'm okay. Um... Putting myself in a situation where I get even better. How do I want to do that? I'm going to try and fish for hand knowledge. So, what's the best card he could throw at me with that plus one power stun of beauty? I'm going to assume he wants to move in. I'm going to assume he knows he's going to lose to dive here if I strike. Um, so, if he wants to move in... Probably the best thing he can stun immunity with is either flying power bomb or spinning pile driver. Um, assault might also be an option if he has a way to boost his speed. So I'm going to try and parry uh, spinning pile driver just because that ignores armor and guard. I'm a tanky character. I want to get it out of the way. You're successful. <laughs> All right, I'm going to gain a gauge by boosting key charge. All right, I'm not scared of this. He hasn't done anything to actually threaten me. Um, so I can continue with my idea of keep my position, hold it over him. Something you'll notice is that he has 19 cards in deck, and I have 22. Um, in taxi meta, this is a concept we call deck pressure. The idea is, is if we both sit here and do nothing, he will deck out first. Therefore, I'm at an advantage sitting here and doing nothing. Because if we both do nothing, I win. Mm -hmm. It requires me... It puts the pressure on me to act first. I can't allow yes. the situation to remain unchanged. He has to do something to counter what I'm doing. So I can sit here, make my position better, and wait. Um, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play plus three power. All right. you are, um, you're, I'm gonna... being, you're being accused of a bad parry. Uh, did you, were you under the impression that this card moved me? No. Okay. So this, this specifically... I know that at this range, he's not going to beat me. None of the cards at this range he has beat me. I don't care about any of the cards at this range. This is to try and say, hey, I'm going to take away one of your strongest threats at range 1. Not for this strike, but in the future. Because this strike, I'm already winning. And this is the card I'm scared most of if he gets a turn without me having boost in play. All right, so um, I believe you still need to pay your force cost. But thank you for explaining that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, let's see. Man, I kind of hate this. I'm actually going to spend this mobile gear because I drew a card that I think is better. All right. Reading Assault. I don't have Assault. Okay. One, two, so I know he wants me at range one. 
Unfortunately, I also don't have the dive. Um, I can try and wild swing for the dive, but that's a little bit on the risky side. I'm plus two speed, plus three power. I have to assume he's also playing an assault. Um, because most of his slower options will get stunned out. Uh, so that nope, tells nope, me... Nope. Oh, you're right. You have stun immunity. <laughs> Snip that one in the bud. Most of the options that are slower still get out traded, though. Do they not? Like, a so, uh, sweep gets trades evenly. So I guess that's an option as well. You can out trade me, but we'd end up at range one. Yeah. I think I'm fine with this. I'm in a wild swing with the goal of not giving up too many cards in hand. This could be very bad. It is very bad for me. You uh, I mean, I don't hit you. I know, that's why it's bad for me. I only get one gauge instead of two. <coughs> I didn't actually get anything out of my boosts. I didn't get the power I threatened. But, I did cost a lot of resources. I'm actually not opposed to this. Um, I'm going to play a very simple boost. Plus one armor, plus three guard. It doesn't do a whole lot here. He also doesn't have a whole lot to threaten here. Run. Alright, and now the game starts. <laughs> I have two gauge. I feel like the game's already started. This is going to be one of the rare instances where I think I actually prepare. Interesting. I know it kind of gets rid of my deck advantage, but I know what I have in hand, and I know what I can threaten, and I'm not super scared of his range 2 yet. I want him to make another move before I do my thing. So here's here's my question, especially because I think the audience has got to wonder. You have Tropical Chalice in hand. Why don't you play it? I'm trying to put pressure on your dives. If you if you have dives in hand, you need to keep them there. Just, just to deal with me. Gotcha. All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna strike. All right. He's striking. I also need to respond. If I strike with something speed five, the only thing he can hit me with is assault or cross. Obviously, assault being much better for him. If I strike with something speed six, he can't hit me with assault anymore. Now it needs to be crossed or some other fast option. Uh, or a guardy option like sweep or spike. Yeah, it could also be sweep. Uh, but my worst case scenario is that you assault in, so I'm going to play cross. That's sensible. I will take the three, hit you for three, and then close two. Sure thing. And I'm taking three because I have this plus one armor. Right. Yeah, four minus one equals three. So I don't have advantage. Uh, you can gauge because you hit. I don't have advantage, but sure. I'm at range one, so I'm still okay with this. Yeah. <clears throat> and now I'm going to play something to try and create pressure. This plus two speed move. All right, critical wild swing. Welcome to Discord meta. All right. So I can play. I could play this, which is speed seven. But he has critical, so he's got that plus one speed. I'd rather filter more options, so I'm gonna go for this propeller dagger. That's very good for me. Hold yep, up. I'm gonna get uh, out of the corner. Spin your gauge, and then how are you getting out of the corner? Yeah. Oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> That's the answer, I'm dumb. It happens. If he'd had two gauge, he would have been able to get out of the corner, and this would have actually been very good yeah. for him. Because even though he would trade down on life, he would get out of the corner. As it is, not so much. I do take four. And I'm going to take seven. Yes, you are. And a card. So this is part of the theory of the Discord meta side of things, order, which oh. is, I wild swung here, and I still won combat. So I'm putting more pressure on him. Let's see him turn it around. You're trying to taxi. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to get out of the corner now. I'm actually I'm actually quite scared. We're gonna do the rare thing and use the Shovel Knight move action. Just to move here. We're still at range one. Um I could spend one more card to go to range two. I actually think I will. I think that's very wise. 
And because of this ability, I'm going to draw two cards. I don't really like it because now I'm at that deck disadvantage. Um, I'm at 14 cards to his 17. So it means that I need to act first if something comes up. But at least I'm out of immediate threat. Mm -hmm. I'm striking from All right, I need a wild swing here. I don't have anything in hand that does well. All right, take four. All right, uh, and now I will compound my threat. Pulling you back into the corner and maintaining a gauge so I can continue to critical. All right, we're going to get digging. Plus okay. one power, move three. Getting back out of corner, saying no. Strike. Okay, I am most scared of Assault and Dive here. I would really like to reading him, but I don't think I'm going to be able to this game. I'm going to play the focus just to try and get something if he comes in. You take two, I take five. And I get to draw a card. Mm -hmm. Your turn. Alright, still not a great situation for me. Not a, not a big fan. We're going to play this plus one armor, plus three guard. The idea is we're just going to try and hit you back. We're going to wait to draw some cards that are better. You have to strike into me because otherwise I'm threatening to play Triple Chalice. Or I could gain stun immunity and not care what happens. Okay. At this point, I'm going to play Triple Chalice. I'm going to challenge his dive in hand. I get to draw a card for playing it and draw a card at end of turn. I strike. Interesting. Any critical? Nope. This is a plus one power stun immune. It is plus one I power don't power like that it's not critical. <laughs> that actually that actually scares me a lot more than if it were. Mm -hmm. You are you're you're getting teased a little bit in chat. I feel in, uh, obliged to inform you. Um, Jay observes though that I that I mean there is value this is why defensive set play is hard. If you make one mistake, all of a sudden the tables can get flipped on you. Mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, Jay observes that. Uh, there's value in seeing what happens when the plan goes wrong as well, since this does tend to happen in actual games. Yeah. No. 100%. <laughs> mm -hmm. Defensive set play requires you know your character really well, and requires that you not really make a mistake. Yeah. It's it's not like offensive set play, where you can just kind of play a card and then hope your opponent doesn't do anything. You need to be very active in preventing your opponent from doing what they want to do. Yep. I'd like to point something out to the audience. Uh, if you saw Jay's section on aggressive set play and are watching this taxi section on defensive set play, you may notice that both of them said that the other type of set play was easier and uh, in reverse, right? So Jay said that defensive set play is easier because it allows you to, it makes it easier not to make mistakes. And taxi just said the opposite. Uh, this is exceed. Figure out what works for you because you're going to find something easier than something else. There's somebody that okay. I just taught the game to this morning who immediately was like, wow, striking seems terrible. And I'm like, I know the school of thought that you belong to. Um, <laughs> and then I see new players who are like, man, all I want to do is strike. I'm like, ah, you are not a taxi meta player. So figure out what works for you, figure out what suits your play style, and then play different characters and see which ones reward your play style best. Because you have a ton of options. Find who you like. All right. I have the plus three speed. I know that both of his Vanishing Flats are down. Which means he doesn't really have an option to hit me long range. Um, I h kind of have to assume this is Flying Power Bomb, trying to get some value in case I cross. Because I do have this boost down. So I basically do win this strike. I'm going to play the cross anyway. I think it puts me in a better position. You're correct. I take six. I close two. I get gauge, but I miss. All right, and now we get to see some of the absurd powers that these boosts have to offer. Plus three speed, and we're spinning our gauge because Shovel Knight doesn't really care about exceeding. So this gauge is a free resource for us to do what we want to do. All right. I'm not at range one. Uh, I don't really want to spend anything currently at my disposal to move to range one. Much as I hate it, prepare. All right, he prepared. We're going to layer on. I think that we can beat him at range 1 if he moves into range 1. I've got a big speed advantage. I'm going to try and make the most of my strike. And the way I'm going to do that is by playing power. Because the more power I have, the heavier my attack's going to hit. So I'm going to get this grasp out of my hand. 
and play plus two power. There's a few things that I'm checking for right now. Uh, I am genuinely concerned about one of these things. Don't worry about it, D. Alright. <laughs> I will prepare. Okay, I'm going to play plus two power again. I will close one. I think I can beat him here if I strike into him. I have plus three speed. I have plus four power. Uh... But I'm not quite content. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Why have plus two power when I can have another plus three speed, plus three power, and plus three armor? So, any sensible person in this situation would strike with this card for everyone in the audience. And just accept that they lose the strike. Luckily, uh, I'm Zangief, and Zangief is not sensible. So, let me just double check that at this range, I am perfectly okay with this. Uh, yeah, let's call that a critical strike. You are absolutely insane if you're attacking me with anything. That's correct. Welcome to Discord. <laughs> okay, so something I'd like to say about Shovel Knight's cards is that they have two stat lines. You have the stat line at the top of your card, and you have the stat line on the, f on the table. Um, this is a pretty impressive stat line. This is 6 speed, 5 power, and 3 armor. Like, at this point, these aren't boosts. This is just a straight up another attack. Essentially. Um, yeah, like... I'm gonna play Warhorn, and I know, I know you're playing the critical flying power bomb. Yeah, absolutely. But, this does, this does tons of damage. Yeah, so I take 10. Yeah. And then I close 2, and you take 6. Uh, no, I take 3. No, no, I have 9 power. You take 6. Oh, you're right. Okay. <laughs> And all those boosts go away. Yay! So this seems pretty bad for me. And it is. But on the other hand, if I just never lose a strike, I can close this game in two hits. One hit if I'm lucky. All he has to do is never lose a strike. Exactly. That easy. Alright. I kind of want to get out of here. And I have a few ways to do that. I don't actually need my dives. Because moving is going to be way better for me. I don't actually need my alchemy coin. This power is not useful anymore because his life is so low. If I hit him first, I'm probably killing him. So that's three fours. So that's three fours. Uh, which would put me there. Do I really need to gauge? I want to keep it just so I can threaten the propeller dagger I have. Um, so I can threaten to move out. But if I hit with this propeller dagger, he's going to die. So I don't actually need to. So I'm just going to keep one. Move to range three. And this one is so I can play a boost. And just draw my two cards. Neat. I'm back. Alright, and now we play Assault. And we run away. And now you are reductive. Bravely will... into the sunset. Yes. Um, play Assault. I believe you have one left. I do. It was the bottom yep. card of my deck. I know. Advance two, take five. We're at range one. This is the danger of having your deck run out, by the way. I was counting his cards, and I knew that as soon as he drew through that deck, if he didn't do something to get rid of those normals, I would be able to land that reading. Yep. Sure. And this is the point where I, I just need to run away again. If I stay at range one, I'm going to lose. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pitch cards and run away. Three force. We're going to run away here. Is the last card Propeller Dagger? Did I count that right? Or did you, did you uh, yes, that? Propeller Dagger. Thank you. So you're I'm going to keep on to this because I want to try and play this boost. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being a little bit greedy. It's also two force in case I need to run away again. Uh, which uh, you almost certainly will. I don't need this much gauge. Two, three. I only need one gauge. Let's be real. Yours. All right, and we're just gonna back up. Strike. So what actually hits me here? Both your banishing flats are down. Uh, did you use both flying power bombs or just the one of them? It was both, both right? Of them are down. You've used one assault and one dive. 
And zero spikes. It's not a spike, D. <laughs> Nothing you can say will convince me it's a spike. <laughs> uh, so this is the mix-up. I have to choose whether I want to lose to a soldier dive. All right, and the mad ass. If I play cross, I lose to dive. If I play mobile gear, I lose to assault. Uh, Ed the Mad asks, what are the characters that Taxi Meta plays the most? Uh, Monado and who else? So, I like to play Monado. Um, I'm basically the only Monado player in our scene. Um, Chun-Li is really popular. Uh, for me, actually. So again, just, uh, <laughs> just me. Uh, Chun-Li offers a lot of boosts. Um, her backside is also her really insane. Mode. Her exceed mode. Her, her exceed mode. Um, because every time you play a boost, you can retreat one, and you also have plus zero to one range for every continuous boost you have in play. Yeah, it's pretty uh, easy. Which lets you beat the speed curve for free off of any boost. And she has a lot of boosts that will strike immediately and do something. Yep, other folks have uh, remarked, have chimed in to remark that Promonite and Renea are also popular in tax mid, apparently. Is that true? Yep. yep. One of our top players plays Renea. Um, we don't actually have a lot of people who play duplicate characters. Oh, okay. A lot of diverse mains. Um, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yumina is a top pick. Cyrus. Ooh, Cyrus um, is real good. Yeah. Characters that can threaten to do something on your opponent's turn and say, hey, you have to deal with me. Mm -hmm. And Shovel Knight's probably the most straightforward way to do it. Almost every character has a way to do this. Some of them are just more complex than putting a boost down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Monado does it many times just by moving, because he can generate so many resources for free by stealing stuff from his discard pile. Yep, Monado can say, hey, I move back one. Not only am I at a different range, I'm also threatening this EX. And if you don't do anything, I'm threatening to mill you. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's why I like Monado. Speaking of threats, what will it be? I'm going to choose that you want to hold on to the dive just in case. So I'm going to play the cross. That is correct. Nobody hits, but that's fine. Your turn. All right. I don't have a boost that helps me here, unfortunately. But I'm at range two, and none of these cards help me. I'm not that I'm not really in danger of decking out anymore because both life totals are so low. I'm going to change cards three. Mm -hmm. The goal is to get anything that helps me out of this situation. I'm gonna close one because I'm saying Gave. Alright, and now we're gonna play the card that helps us get out. We're gonna play plus three speed. And I drew a normal. The only way he really Oh, both of your readings, both are, readings down. are down. Both readings are down. Okay. Typically, if, you're, if your opponent has readings in the late game, the only way that they can really mess you up if you do something like this is by reading one of your normals. So, out of good habit, I'm going to discard this Assault because it's the one card that could get me in trouble here if he, re if he read it. Mm -hmm. Tech. And that tech hurts. But you know what hurts more? We're going to play another plus three speed. And you have no more techs. Alright. And this is where we do the discard meta thing. Critical wild swing. Uh, what? Uh, I went on bottom. It was the ultra. I'm just gonna reshop. Wait, no, hold on. I started with an ultra. That was my first oh. play. It wasn't the ultra. Did it disappear? 28. No, it didn't disappear. It's in there somewhere. Wait, was it just literally the top card? Maybe? I only played one double area at this game, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Reshuffle. Yeah, we'll just pretend that didn't happen. Uh, okay. Tabletop simulator is an interesting thing sometimes. He has that plus one speed. Uh, I'm going to try and figure out what's left in his deck. How much armor options he has available. So I see he has the double lariat. That's one armor. That doesn't actually beat a speed 10 grasp because I'll still kill him first. Mm -hmm. um, focus is down. And block, frankly, I think I win against block, but block's also down. So I'm going to play speed 10 grasp. I don't think you have a way to beat this. Are you calling checkmate? Uh, no, because that tends to get me in trouble. Alright. Uh, you're actually correct, though. There is nothing in my yeah. deck that covers that. So, yeah. the reason I did this, for those wondering, is maybe he didn't have the grasp. And that, yep. is, that is a principle Discord meta lives by, and it is actually 
kind of the opposite of a principle of Taxi Meta, right? So Taxi Meta says, uh, try to play stuff that your opponent can't beat no matter what they have. And Discord Meta says, play stuff without caring what your opponent can beat. Yeah. Ta taxi Meta is like, assume your opponent always has the card that beats you in their hand. Yeah. Oh, and I just realized, because... to be clear, Taxi Meta is, the, is a nickname for this defensive set play, play style. Yes. Uh, well, Taxi Meta is a nickname for a set of theories that lead towards this defensive play style. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which doesn't doesn't sound a lot different, but um, ha has a little bit to do with different. This idea um, that we referred to earlier is like kind of a big taxi meta theory, but also applies to aggressive play as well. The whole point of playing an exceed is to put yourself at an advantage on your turn. Mm -hmm. um, one of the the big things that separates out taxi meta from Discord meta is whether or not they be people believe striking puts them at an advantage. Um, so taxi meta says, I strike you. Okay, now it's your turn. Now you can do whatever you want to me. That's not good. So if I strike you, I need to make sure that I'm not in a situation where you can just act however you want back. Um... Discord meta kind of says, well, if I strike you, I have a life lead. So even if you do something back to me, then we're just both even. Yeah, basically. It's uh, yeah. it's less about making sure you never lose or and always win. And it's more about... Uh, sorry, Discord met meta is more about saying, I'm going to win enough that I don't care how much you win. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is, by the way, uh, not stable for every character. That's a big thing is... What characters you play and what your personal play style is will determine which these you gravitate to. Or, hey, find some third branch. Like, come up with your own thing. Right. There's room. And no no top player just follows one set of Taxi Meta or Discord Meta theory right now. That is true. Both are important to understand because they both offer different concepts that apply to your game. Yeah, and a lot of it is matchup dependent for what is the most important right this minute. Right. Or even situation dependent. You know, one turn I might be like, Hey, this is the this is the type of neutral game that's gonna give me the best chance of winning. And then something happens that changes the board state, and I say, "Oh, I need to be more aggressive now. I'm going to switch my game plan idea over to a more Discord theory styled one because that gives me the best shot at winning." Mm -hmm. Just probably not with this character. Not with this character. This <laughs> character is the taxi meta character. The idea of, I do something, and if you strike into me, even even if we trade, even if we trade, I have the next turn and I can do something better. So I still have the first turn advantage, even if we trade. Mm -hmm. um, the last speaker... Matt? Who was it? Matt Brunner? Was it Matt? Uh, yeah, Matt, yes, Matt. Matt talked about, Matt talked about how good the first turn is. After every strike, there's another first turn. Mm -hmm. and being able to take use of that first turn or deny your opponent the ability to do anything useful with that first turn is a really strong concept mm -hmm. well uh would you do you think you have time for another game or do you want to try another game it's up to you i can do another game i can also answer questions whatever works yeah uh if y'all have questions just ask in the twitch chat uh i'll also check discord once in a while but most of the twitch chat i'm keeping up with does anyone have a character request for... Because because you guys were asking about other characters that were popular in this meta or that could be played this way. Does anyone have a request for seeing one? Mm -hmm. uh, Jay has a question. I wonder if it's a real one. Jay is well known for, for trolling. Let's see what we got. Jay is going to ask for zone geef. Huh, this is actually pretty fair. Why did you change cards your mobile gear uh, when you're approaching in-game and you're at range 2? When you did the CC. Mobile option? gear didn't actually help me win a strike. Mobile gear helped me get out of danger. But the problem was is that to get out of danger, I would need to strike with it, and that would put me in danger. Ah, because it's not safe defensively against someone like Zangief, who's likely to... Right, it's not safe ball. defensively, and even aggressively, it wasn't actually that safe. Mm -hmm. Um, You could do the wild thing and 
cross me. So or Jess, why didn't you strike with it and win the game? Uh, yeah, well, I had a cross left. Yeah, he had a cross uh, left. That that's essentially why. If if I strike at that point in the game, Zangief's job is to play the fastest card he has. Literally, nothing else matters. Yeah, because we're an in in-game. Like, normally right. Zangief never strikes with cross, but if we're an in in-game, all the rules go out the window. It's about being faster and not dying. So that idea, it, like, I could strike, but if he has the cross, I lose. Alright. I don't want to lose. There I want to win. There are a bunch of suggestions, so I'm going to start pulling out the ones that people are talking about and asking about. Uh, oh boy. So okay. Have... Renee, unfortunately, despite being really good for taxi meta, I'm absolutely terrible at this character. <laughs> and I'm even worse. So we won't be playing Renea. Uh, but you can look at the videos from earlier, uh, if you missed them, where Byron Crane was playing Renea. Eugenia is really interesting, and here's my hot take on Eugenia. Eugenia is a Discord meta character. I mean, she's barely an er active character in terms of how she plays. Like, she very much, to me, plays the card game. She doesn't play the fighting game. So it's hard for me Oh, to no. I think, I think she plays the fighting game. I think her card oh. game abilities are bad, and she should ignore them. Interesting. Uh, so All right. So these are the characters that were talked about. This was Poi Man, so I'm not sure if he was kidding or not. This is Poi Man. He'll yell at me if I play this. So okay. I'll take Enchantress. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Poi Man will be like, what are you doing with this character? Garbage. Alright, well, I'll play Eugenia, because I'm pretty comfortable with her, and I'm certainly more comfortable with her than I am with Renea. I could play Sydney and Serena, but uh, I don't want to get yelled at by Poi Man either, so... <laughs> Here we go. Alright, I don't have too much Enchantress experience. But I'm betting that D doesn't have too much Eugenie experience. Really? So we'll be okay. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, so looking through, we don't have a lot of stat boosts. Um, which is fine. We just have to threaten things in other ways. We have a lot of ways to win at range. How many of them beat Eugenius things? Depends on the details. Yeah. Like so I'm trying to figure wave. out what range I want to be sticking to. What what range is going to cause the most trouble for Eugenia, and the least trouble for me? Notably, Eugenia, like uh, like Andrew was talking about with Jeffrey, is not a character with a very obvious fixed prefer preferred range. Like Shimmer is best at two. Werelight is a spike like it's range two to four. It's kind of weird. Absinthin is obviously projectile and it's pretty good at it. Color Spray is like a range one card, but it's unsafe a lot of the times. Then plot hook is a range question mark question mark question mark. Uh, Enchantress right. has a lot less freedom to choose her ranges. We'll see if that's an issue for you or not. This is true. Uh, yeah. So it sounds like I just need to play solid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, fire wave beats absinthe and arrow, but you end up down a lot of resources, which may or may not be a bad thing. Uh, mm hmm. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Mix asks, right. what style of play do you think Enchantress is best at? Sorry, you cut out for just a second yeah. there. Mix asks, what style of play do you think Enchantress is best at? Uh, I know my theory on this. I don't know if you have one. The way I've seen Enchantress played in most effective is a character that attacks the opponent's hand very aggressively. And the way she does this is... She'll get you to come in because she has really good long-range options that she can threaten. She'll run to the other side of the board, and then when you have to run to chase her, all of a sudden you're out of cards, and she gets away for free. Mm -hmm. And now you're in a situation where you can't move in because you don't have the amount of cards to. She can keep hammering you with attacks, and it's a bad situation. It's really similar to Re reuse Hadoken line, um, but it's a little bit more movement-based to try and run the opponent out of hand. All right, this should be interesting. Uh, fresh flip? Uh, Tails. Your choice. All right, I will go first, as is common wisdom. <laughs> and we're looking for cards that can be good here. The first thing I notice in this kit is a speed five option that hits at range, which means that is the speed number to beat. Mm -hmm. I also notice that plot hook that plot hook has guard, which means I need to be able to crush that power. Mm -hmm. And where light for some reason also has an absurd amount of guard. 
It's a spike flank. Hmm. I'm not really a fan of any of these. Mulligan 6. Everyone's wondering about the card backs, by the way. The characters who can steal opponents' cards have different card backs in this module, just so you can't confuse what cards belong to whom. Except in the mirror. In which case, you're kind of asking for it. Technically, I should have waited for Taxi to Mulligan first. Yep. Alright, we're just going to Mulligan 2. Good luck and have fun. So the big threat right now is Spiral Orb. Or sorry, Homing Orb, Homing Orb. Because a Speed 6 Homing Orb beats everything. Yes. Well, yeah, because I can push or pull. So you can go to range 5. Yeah, the, so only, the, only thing, the only thing that, that it doesn't beat is Plot Hook. And Plot Hook is kind of mm. mad. The annoying thing is that as soon as I play a card, it actually doesn't beat everything anymore. Uh, right? Because if if I play, like, for example, if, if I were to play, like, card. plus speed. If you play a different card, yes, yes. Then then it's not yeah, yeah. useful because it doesn't hit anymore. Which is Because of, of how Homing Orb works, yeah, it doesn't hit anymore. Um, which is kind of what makes Enchantress a fun, cool character, is she has to worry about how many cards she has in hand. Yeah, I actually really enjoy the minigame of, like, managing Enchantress's hand. Which is why I'll be trying to manage your hand from over here. So we're probably going to back up right away. And we're going to spend this grasp to do it. And the goal of this move is just to say, where light doesn't hit anymore. That's probably the option I'm the most scared of right now. If you hit me with Absinthin, fine. You don't draw. And the move in is very respectable. Was that a prepare action? No, I... Oh. Right, Enchantress is weird. Yes, Enchantress does not draw at the end of her turns. All right, I don't like my hand, but I kind of have a way to do things. I'm going to play Mind Control. How many? How much force are you spending? I'm going to spend all three of my hand. And the reason I'm doing this is Enchantress says, if you don't have cards in your hand at the end of your turn, you get to draw back up to six. Hmm. All right, so these are the three cards. Um... I mean, I'm very obviously going to choose Color Spray. That transform is quite good. And now I just get to draw six cards. Yep. And I'm going to parry Focus so I don't get red on this grass. I don't have a Focus. <coughs> Here's my new hand, though. Zero, four, five, homing, magic, shatter. Thank you. I'm going to do the exact same thing for two reasons. Um, first off, you'll remember how he said... Homing Orb was a threat turn one, because it beat everything he had. If I parry Focus, if he has Focus, now he won't be able to read my normals. If he doesn't have Focus, I have five cards in hand now, which is a tricky little boost idea I can play because now my Homing Shot or my Homing Orb beats everything. So I'm gonna parry Focus as well. Alrighty, I'll reveal these, and then on my turn I'll play this boost. We're not a fan of the plus two speed. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, not in love with it. We need to tech it. Unfortunately, this means our homing orb no longer beats everything. Yep. But at least we got that out of the way. I have plus two power if uh, you have two or fewer cards in hand as a hit effect. Gotcha. So we really want to avoid being at that two or lower cards range. Good luck. Yeah, that's going to be hard. <laughs> <laughs> So how do we want to do this? I think the most obvious thing I can do is another backup. I'm not a huge fan of it. In case he drew the reading, I'll spend the normal. The normal didn't get me anything at that range anyway. Plus two power. 
Layering on the pressure. The big threat here is Absinthe and Arrow, but also Plot Hook would be really, really bad for me. Um, him landing Plot Hook right now is basically my worst nightmare. All right, and now we're going to do a really mean idea. We're going to play Critical Attack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a hit effect, so it's not going off right now. But this gives us six cards in hand and kind of a way to threaten out extra power. Or if we go low on hand, a way to threaten his card advantage. Yep, I'm going to close one space. All right, back to the range four dance. It is what it is. None of us like it a whole bunch. Hmm. I'm going to play plus two speed. The threat here is pretty obvious. I need to outspeed this. Hmm. I'm going to run. Hmm. I think it's my turn to run now. <laughs> Keeping right. that plus two speed alive, threatening the dive, threatening a bunch of my projectiles to hit speed six now. Mm -hmm. Also, homing orb nor notably is speed eight here, if I had one up. Yep. Uh, you know I have absent Strike. Right. All right. Absinthe and Arrow is the thing he could hit me with here. It's not actually the thing I'm most scared of. The thing I'm most scared of is Plot Hook. Um, if I had a dive, I still beat the Plot Hook. Fine. But I have to go here in the corner. And I also don't like that. Absinthe and Arrow will hit me even if I cross. And that's kind of the big thing I have to deal with right now. So, I think I have to regrettably play the Fire Wave. Or, what is... If he hits me with them Sith and Arrow, it's only going to be 4 damage. I'm going to have to discard some cards, but uh, I get away. Probably 6 power. Oh, you're right, because of your ability. Well, okay, yeah, so we're going to play the Fire Wave, and we're just going to kind of hope. Alright, spend a Force to Validate. Yes. I will spend this. All right, so you hit me first. I take four. Okay. You push me. Uh, oh, sorry. Yep. I have to discard a card of my choice, yes? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, you know about this. I'll discard it. Uh, knew about this, I should say. All right. I took my four. Now on hit, you make a choice. I'm going to reveal my hand. I don't have that many cards. Do you want to deal with the focus or the cross? Um, you will absolutely discard the cross. I choose not to reveal anything. But I do have plus two power because of this, so take eight. Minus two is six. Excuse me. Because you have two armor. Yep. All right. Your turn. All right. We want to get this reading out of our hand. That's really the thing we want right now. So we're going to reading focus. Pretty simple target. And you must wild sing. Doesn't get more. him anything. And gets reading out of his hand because my deck is getting small. If he has one. Uh, and we're just going to Wild Swing. Yeah, uh, so let's see. Absinthe is pretty free here. Yeah, I don't think it actually... Oh, it loses to one thing. Do you have another magic shot? No, you don't. Uh, and you don't have enough force for that. Yeah, we'll, we'll play Absinthe. I don't want to get dived randomly. Invalid. Alright, this is invalid. Invalid. This is... Also invalid. <laughs> valid. All right. Draw a card and then discard it. Four. Reveal. Please take six. Gotcha. Oh. All right. Cleanup phase. I get to draw my six cards. Yep. That's the really important thing here. And it's why that wasn't actually the worst, even though it did hurt for Enchantress. Yeah. I'm at a I'm at a life disadvantage. I'm at a life disadvantage, but I have a resource advantage and I can start making that up hopefully soon. 
I have plot hook in hand, by the way. Your turn. I don't like you having plot hook in hand. Are you sure you don't want to discard it? I'm good, thanks. You, you, if you want to, the option's always there. Not on your turn, unless you make me do it. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 you played reading. It's my turn. Oh, I'm really yeah. bad at this. Oh, <sighs> sorry. Yeah, you can you can discard it if you want. I thought it was your turn for some reason. I mean, I, I'd be a fan of you discarding it. You don't have to, but like, I, I think it'd be a good move, right? <laughs> like, realistically, is there anything... Anything I have that would beat it? And, my, and the answer is no. So, uh... Unless I'm missing something really obvious. You tell me. Fight me. Okay. Yeah, this is annoying. <laughs> he's basically going to hit me. You can trade with it. like. Yeah, he, he's basically going to hit me, is what he's saying. Um, I just need to come up with a way to hit him back. And luckily I have one. Unfortunately, my answer would be sweep, but he doesn't have a cards in hand. And I really want to discard a card. Uh, but I think I think I just do it anyway. I think it's probably wise. You take five, I take six. My advantage. Gage. Why am I taking five? Huh? Sorry, three? Why am I? Three? Yeah, okay. Wow. Alright, high level play, folks. Uh, my advantage, I will prepare. Sounds reasonable. And I'm going to do the brave thing and run away. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Hey, there's your reshot. We're going to run all the way to range six. Yep. We're going to draw these three cards that he's going to know about. Unfortunately, there's an assault in there, but I just kind of have to hope he doesn't draw the reading that I've been filtering all game. Mm -hmm. And then three more cards. Okay. So he didn't draw the reading. It's important thing number one. Well, he hopefully didn't draw the <laughs> Maybe I drew it now. <laughs> We're going to play our reading. Alrighty. We're going to reading... Focus and dive. Dive. Both have not appeared. Okay. Yeah, we're in a reading dive. Very well. You got it. The assault. Yep, that's correct. So this gets that out of his hands, which was known. We're so setting up. What I really want is my exceed mode, because it's going to let me reshuffle. Yeah, his exceed mode's a big deal. Um. Uh, so free shuffle is a nickname for a reshuffle that does not account, account against your limit. So she has, when you exceed, shuffle your hand and discard pile into your deck. Meaning... It is like a reshuffle, but it's it's not a reshuffle in game terms. So you don't consume yeah. your once per game reshuffle to do it. Uh, Monado is notorious for doing this a lot. As uh, for yes. doing this a lot. Yes, I mean he can do it more than once per game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this does not say like this does not trigger your once per game reshuffle. This is free. So any effect in the game that says to shuffle things into your deck doesn't like it doesn't trigger your reshuffle because you are not drawing or wild swinging from an empty deck or taking the reshuffle action. Those are the only things that can trigger your reshuffle. And now, for our featured program, we're going to run away. This costs two force to play. Then I can draw or discard up to three cards. And some people see this and are like, why would I ever discard cards when I can just draw three? This is why. I'll discard one. End of turn. Hey, look, I don't have any cards in hand. Let's draw six. Makes sense. All right, I will close one. Okay. Okay. All right, he only has one card in hand. We are going to try and put pressure on him. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of ways to make unbeatable strikes right now. So I just need to strike into him and hope he doesn't have the answer. This is kind of that switch between theories based on what suits your current situation, what you can actually accomplish. Yeah, and I'm just going to hope I wild swing the right answer. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it either, but oh well. 
Uh, All right, I get to decide what I want to spend his force. I'm going to push him away. My main goal, if I don't have cards that hit at long range in this hand, is to get cards that hit at long range. And the way I'm going to do that is by discarding force. So even though I have all this gauge, I'm not actually that uh, needing to spend it. So I'm going to discard Spike. We're going to push you back too. We're going to have a grand old time. This is not good for me. Hmm. Is there any way in which this works out well for me? Um. Prepare. Okay. We're going to play the plus two power. I have a limited number of cards that threaten things here. This is basically saying, hey, they're going to hit you harder. Interesting. Advance three. We do what we must. All right. All so right. JS, I'm considering. Oh, sorry. J JS, why I didn't transform time for T. Time for T is a transformation that lets me spin a force, make the opponent discard a card at random. But that actually can help Enchantress out because reducing the number of cards in her hand makes it easier for her to spin force on actions like move, in order to get her automatic reload at end of turn. Yep. All right. Sorry. Even in even in normal matchups, Eugenia kind of needs to consider whether she actually wants to transform or not. And the answer isn't always yes. Yeah. I Sometimes time for T is just way too slow to matter in the matchup, and the gauge just gets you way more. Right, exactly. Like, I consider it pretty uh, good myself, but if it's mm -hmm. your third gauge in particular, you want that gauge. She has very good ultras. Yeah. Her ultras is very scary. Mm-hmm. Your turn. Oh, I know. <laughs> so reading cross was a cool idea I had here. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any crosses left. Uh, but reading cross would send away, make him spend force again to get back in. All the all the good stuff. I'm trying to time my exceeds so that I make the most of my deck because I don't want to deck out. Life totals aren't that high, but they're still high enough. Um, so I'm going to make him make a decision. I'm going to say ground break. You can move two. Well, sorry, advance or retreat up to two. If you move fewer than two spaces, take five damage. So I'm giving him this opportunity to come in. And actually saying you should take it. Oh. Retreat. He moved away. I did. Strike. All right. I'm going to attack with block here. I don't have a card in hand that does anything. All right, this is uh, as a hit effect. One, two, three, four, excuse me, five. It is five power. I get advantage. Okay. This is two armor. Three, four armor. And the cool idea, five, six armor, to take no damage. I get to put this engage anyway. And also, I don't have cards. Let's draw six. Mm-hmm. I'll prepare. Okay. Uh, although that was your strike, was it not? I gain advantage. And oh, this you're time right. I remembered. All right. All right, we're going to play Destructive Force. With the idea being, if I hit him, I can force him to discard some cards. Alright. Hmm. Reading dive? I unfortunately have the dive. Assault? No? Yeah, just grasp. Your turn? Well, we kind of want to get away from him again. <laughs> um, so we're going to do that in a little bit of an interesting way. We're going to say ground break. So that's the same thing. You need to move two or you're going to take five damage. Hmm. Okay. I've got to think about what range I want to be at. The goal is to put him at a range where, theoretically, I have cards that threaten him again. Three. All right. Strike. 
All right, and now are both your absinthe and arrows down? They are, which means I can cross out safely. Correct. I've established my range. We're in a good position. I've got ten cards left, and I kind of want to get one more draw um, before I reshuffle, if only to put pressure on his deck. But I'm not really sure if I need to. Yeah, I don't I don't think I actually need to. So I'm going to exceed. I'm gonna spend four gauge to do so. When I exceed, I can shuffle my hand and discard pile into my deck. This means all of my options are threatening again. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of every turn, instead of drawing, <laughs> I get to draw until I have seven cards. Which means I'm very scared of her Queen of Hearts. But she needs to actually get in to use that. Yep. Alright, I'm going to take the reshuffle action. You want to check my discards? Nope, I'm okay. I need my options live again. Your turn. Alright. We have things that hit him here. We're going to play things that hit him. The goal of this portion of the game for me is going to be to chip at him away enough that when he comes in, I can win a strike. And threaten to kill him. Uh, so we're going to accomplish that with this card. Firewood? Alright, this is a range 6, homing orb. Yep, push or pull? We're going to push you 1. Alright. Hmm, I'll actually take the 1. Okay, I'll get the gauge. Up fair. Sure thing, I'm going to strike. I mean, okay, nothing hits me. So, I'll play this. You're absolutely correct. Nothing hits you. Yep. We're playing the block to get gauge. We're looking to threaten our ultras again as soon as possible. Yep. Did you prepare again? I did. So he's looking to get force so that he can afford to run in. I'm assuming? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We don't really want that to happen, so here's where we throw out the, the, the reading. Um, the question is just what do we read? Uh, and, you know, like... Reading cross is a perfectly valid option cheeky blighter um no i play the assault to get in and i played the thing that beat assault very nice if so this is this is kind of a cool option select if he had the cross he goes away and i win because i gained positioning and i'm much better at that range than he is mm -hmm. if he plays anything else except dive this spike covers him from approaching me that was very sensible. Gain your gauge? Yeah. Even even plot hook, my spike beats the plot hook because of the range we were at. Mm -hmm. I closed one space as an action on my turn, and it's your turn. Gotcha. Uh, we need to end the game soon. So, we're going to change sides with you. Put you in that corner again. And drop to seven at the end of our turn. Really? Oh, I drew seven. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay. Strike. I don't like this. This is your fault. <laughs> uh, so he has a speed seven thing that's very scary, and I don't like it. Um, but it doesn't actually kill me. Just gonna make sure I'm not completely stupid. Okay, I have my I have my blocks still. I was really hoping to draw a block here and just bait it out. I, mean, I didn't draw the block. It still beats block mostly, so I don't mind. On any other character, I would agree with you. That's fair. Enchanters can reload it in a hurry, so it's not that <laughs> bad. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we're we're looking for a way. This is gonna be one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven power. Uh, so if you don't play a card from hands, and it's not a four special, whatever it is that you play, and this is Queen of right. Hearts, right? Then it's eight power. If you do play a card from hand, then it goes down to seven. Except actually, that's ten and nine respectively. And if I reveal, then it's eleven or you know twelve respectively. 
Or irrespective. I got it backwards. Wait, how, how are you getting eight if I play a card from hand? So hold on. You play a card from hand. You got six yeah. cards that you discard, right? So I have seven power. Correct. Eight, nine. Ten, eleven. From my oh, from my right. Trigger them in any order. Okay, well, we're going to we're gonna wild swing and hope for the block. Oh, well, if it's not a block, you might just die. Nope, I'm dead. Uh, probably. Uh, so discard your hand and show me all the numbers. We have a five. All right, so you take two non-lethal. Then I gain uh, seven, eight, nine power and hit you for ten. Good game. Yep. Nope. That's Queen of Hearts for you. Um, this and Seijun are both matchups where Queen of Hearts is incredibly important. The safer play was probably just to leave myself with the one card in hand. Did you have a Spiral Orb? Because, uh, yeah, so honestly, this is what I would have done. You get two cards out of your hand and you get two armor. Like, you're still you're still. Stunned. Oh, you're that's still true. Pain. Wait, no, I'm slower than you, though. No, no, you're, you're still stunned. Like, you're still, you're still stunned, but you're not dead. Oh, because it's a force special. Yeah, you pay a force for it, so it's one less damage, and it has two armor on it. So you stay alive much better. So I think that right. would have been the other play. By mm -hmm. the way, this is largely just character experience. Like, this is not a, like, playstyle thing. This is like, I know Enchantress pretty well, so I was like, oh, this feels like the right time. I was, I was very much hoping to get the block. I, I got a bit greedy there. I yeah, think, it happens. I mean, when you honestly, seven if cards, I hadn't have made that move, I probably could have still threatened to win. Uh, if you had not been at range one, yeah. Because um, yeah. if you went if you went to a range that wasn't one, my next play was to play Assault and just hope that you didn't stuff it so that I could get to range one. I should have... Um, assault was the last card I was keeping in hand. I should have played this as well to go to two. Yeah. And then just drawn seven. Right, because then I, I'm going to try the Assault anyway because I want to try Assault Queen of Hearts to kill, but you have a lot of ways out of that suddenly. Like, you right. can just play Sweet and it works. Uh, but it's really, like, especially when you're playing Enchantress, it's hard to feel like, man, I'm going to draw six cards at the end turn. Surely one of them will be the card I want, right? Um, yep. This is false. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can see, though, like, even with a character that doesn't just have stat boosts, uh, being able to take into consideration what your opponent can do, what you're fine with them doing. Yeah, it can um, put a lot of It can still lead to a lot of options that aren't just, I prepare. Yeah. Um... Like, there was a lot of movement around, where I was like, well, if I'm at this range, then all of a sudden these threats are dead. Some, a little bit more sly boost worrying to try and make the opponent have to do something or trap them. Mm -hmm. In yeah. a bad situation. Um, and there was a lot of it on D's side of the table, too. Yes. Um, I was playing more my typical playstyle, I think, which is kind of all around and also is addicted to EX attacks. So whenever I draw an EX, y'all will notice that I move into position to threaten the, that card so that I can bait my opponent to thinking I only have one copy and then use it on defense. I do this with Absinthe, and I do this with Assault. Like, yep. It's a it's it's part of my line of play just because I love EX attacks. <laughs> Rimless main. <laughs> Alright, thank you so much for your time, Taxi. Um, if folks have questions, fast. feel free to ask. Oh, that's a good one. How would you use Color Spray well? You would lose it, you'd use it when the opponent has... Uh, very few cards in hand, or you would use it in combination with a reading or a defend boost. So Color Spray has no printed defenses, but if the opponent has two or fewer cards in hand, it's stun immunity. If you tack defend onto this, it's still not safe. It only has one armor, three guards, so it still gets stuffed by a decent number of things. But it's safer, and the EX is a lot better, because then the EX is two armor, four guard, which is six, that magic number. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, if you combine it with a reading onto a block or a focus, you can get an absolutely crushing victory. Uh, so, yeah. And the transform on Color Spray is also, in my opinion, one of her best transforms. This transform is pretty much always great. Like, whether whether you want time for tea, just play style and matchup. Hanging by a thread, you basically always want, even though there are characters who can turn it off, like Enchantress. But you pretty much always want it. It's still good. And then, this is always great. Uh, especially because Color Spray is not a reliable Wild Swing. Like, in general, Eugenia is not a reliable Wild Swinger. But, like, getting another copy of Color Spray, Spray out of your deck by transforming it means you don't have to worry about Wild Swinging it into the reshuffle. Uh, yeah, said that and even if, even if you're wild swinging on defense, like this is just like adding sweeps hit effects to every card yeah, in your so, deck. So this gives you value if you're if you're wild swinging things that are actually decent. Which, like I said, she's not very good at doing. Otherwise, this would be much much stronger. Uh, but everyone has normals, and normals sometimes win combat. All right, uh, I'm gonna set things up for the next section. Thank you for your time, Taxi. If folks have questions, feel free to ask in chat or in the Exceed Workshop channel. 
Yeah, thank you. I'll hop back in Twitch chat, so if people have questions, they can always ask me there as well. Perfect. But yeah, thanks for your time. This has been yeah, thank you. Taxi on Defensive Set Play, as well as Hand Pressure and Deck Pressure.